All right. So since I'm on a roll tonight, I think I'll make a couple videos and see if uh, any of these stick later tomorrow when I wake up and I realize, hey, I made videos. So what we're what's here is a uh, HP RX 2620 Integrity server. Oh, the back part is terrible to get off. It was damaged a little bit in shipping. They shipped it in a crate. Well, not really a crate, a box. Again, sorry for the uh, shaky camera and my nasally breath. It's been working hard today. So, right here, this is the in inside, obviously. Uh, Intel Atanium, basically, Intel's first go at 64 bit processing. Here's a 1.4 dual core. Uh, actually I actually have two of these. I'll explain why some of these are in pieces here in a little bit. Excuse me. <coughs> so, anyway, I ordered this. It was 142 bucks plus a little bit shipping, and roughly 200 to get here. I've always wanted to test one out. I've always been intrigued by these. And you can hold two, two of these processors. Uh, they made several models ranging from 1.3 gigahertz to uh, 1.6 single and dual cores. Um, I'll, I'll start with the processors. So basically I went into this blind. I assumed anyone would work. These have three pin connectors, kind of like PCIe I guess. Um, these look like four but they're technically just three. One, two, three. This fourth row isn't populated with anything. I can only assume it was for processors that never came out or whatever. They shifted from this old school uh, ball grid array or a zero and force and socket. Uh, it's roughly 700 pins to uh, the more famous LGA style for the newer for the newer series. Um, I initially wanted to go with two dual core 1.4 gigahertz processors, but the pinout is it would work, except here you got the red on the bottom and the black on the top comparative. Well, compared to the little tab you'd normally click into. But here you have the red wires on the top and the black on the bottom. And I did power this up with both in. It gave me a power error. Not really power error, but uh, voltage error. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, for these, for the microprocessors. And so I looked in and I realized, oh crap, the wiring's wrong. I have tried to adapt the pins, but I haven't had any luck getting them out. So I said, screw it. I ordered a set of 1.6. These uh, these are actively cooled. These weren't made for this system, but these are closer. But the power adapters for those are tight. Well, here, here it is. I've got like four of these things. This is what's connected to power to these, and they don't, as you can see, they don't they don't line up very well. So that's why those are apart. But when I did get this system, it came with two of the I call them VRMs for the processors. These it had two of them in there, and I initially thought that hey, this lines up pretty well with this. Now I haven't gotten to test that. I kind of put this project on hold. This one I was hoping would be the same, but it's not, so I gotta leave it. What I'm gonna end up doing in the meantime, pick up a $40 processor, another titanium one, a 1.5 or so, dual core, and stick it in there just to get the system running. Uh, I think I gotta go with this one, CPU zero. And then I can install uh, Windows and Linux. Now, if you're going to do the same thing, be wary. You do have to get a special version of Windows and Linux. I have uh, old MSDN disks you'd probably get from like school or college that you could have a Windows Server 2003 for Atanium systems, Service Pack 1 and 2. The problem is I don't, I didn't get a key with them and they require a special volume licensing key and I fought it and fought it and fought it, trying everywhere to get a key. The people who had it didn't respond. 
I totally understand. I get it. You know, people ask for product keys. You don't want to give them out. But it's frustrating. I went on the disk. I found for the remote or the uh, unattended file for setup has a product key. Unfortunately, it just looks like a generic one. I'm I I'm not expecting it to work, but I still have hopes I'll find a key sometime. But I do have a key for Server 2008 for Atanium Systems. It's legit. I got a copy of the OS and everything, and that'll be fine. I also have a copy of, is it up here? No, a copy of Linux. I think it's Red Hat 4.0 for Atanium Systems. So that'll be my first dive into Linux. Um, they ship these six, ah, see, excuse me. They ship these systems pretty stock, or not stock, bare. Mine didn't come with processors, but it did come with the VRMs. If you order one, there's no guarantee that these were in here. I didn't see them in the pictures, they just had a picture of the outside of the unit, nothing on the inside. They didn't give an inside shot. If you have one of these, please do that. It makes life a little easier. Um, I haven't had any luck finding actual hard drive caddies for these units. I'm going to try with generic ones, see if they fit, but I just have a 300 gigabyte Ultra 320 SCSI drive sitting down there. More than enough for what I'm going to try to do. Here's your expansion module. I'll show you that in a sec. The CD drive. I thought this too. Uh, you take off the panel to do this. Uh, I'll show you the panel a little bit. Uh, normally, right here, you have a tab that has your uh, service ID. Not ID, but serial number and all that. And that's where a product key would be. I asked all the sellers on eBay if they had any for a Windows Server 2003 COA. None of them did. None of them had any COAs. The only reason I asked that is because I saw someone on YouTube who had a similar system. His did. But no big deal. But CD, it uses this special weird brown IDE connector. This is an IDE hard drive. Uh, well, not IDE. I think it's SCSI, but it's retooled to IDE. Now, mine came with the cable, but it didn't come with the drive. And this drive is just a DVD-ROM, a gray unit, whatever. It's not nothing special, but it has a backplate that adapts to this. And for the longest time, I couldn't find it. Well, I can't tell you what this connector is called, because I couldn't figure it out, but I just searched HP uh, laptop hard drive. It goes under some part number. Um, just uh, scan for the back of it in the pictures. It might take you a little while. It, it certainly did for me. I spent weeks looking for one. But I found it. And if you got the cable, you're good. Now for the, uh, I guess I can show you the back. You've got your two uh, power supply parts. Your power supplies actually sit under here. You got two of them redundant. I think they're like 600 or so odd watts. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You've got your external SCSI, your LAN, uh, they got three of them. One's for a remote management card, I think. Or no, I think there's just I think there's just three. One's just not gigabit. Some of these do. They have what's controlled called a uh, I call it the video module. I'm sorry for that being out of shot. This is required if you're going to install Windows. It's not if you're going to do Linux. If you're going to have like a rack of these, not that you would. This is outdated technology. But if you do, if you're an enthusiast like me you want to make sure it has this card so that way you have your video and you got your console port your USB it does have USB it's got dedicated USB for your keyboard and mouse actually and then general USB and serial keys came strapped to the back um, you get four you can see the card I put in there the fiber card just for giggles it, you got four PCIe-X slots the top one up here, I'll show you in a sec, is the fastest with one gig throughput, I believe. The all all the other ones have five. Oh, excuse me. I gotta use my inhaler or something dumb for asthma. Don't get asthma, kids. It's boring. This is a DDR1 system. I think you can equip this to like 24 gigs if you can find it. This is registered. 
I think I currently have eight gigs in here. Let me see. Are these two gig modules? Yeah, they're two gig modules. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not it's not terribly expensive, but if you want massive capacity for an old system like this, like it's it can be a pain. Now I gotta fight this to get back get this back on. My goal is if I can get this one up and running and I can find all the parts I want and need, especially if I can get caddies, I'm gonna tinker with it. Now I did go to school for programming. I'm no longer in those courses because I switched to electromechanical. Pardon the camera wobble. But I still program for fun at home. I'm no whiz, but I do want to see what the Atanium servers are like. This dead architecture. I think they stopped. They did stop making these processors in 2017. So I think HP is the only real person who supports them. I'll pull this out for you. You lift up. And mine was damaged again in shipping, so I gotta kinda tug at it. And what you do is you remove this plate, it kinda just slides off. There you go. Up and out. Set that over there. You can see it's got a gnarly connector right there. Look at that. That is gnarly. You got this is the one you'd want like preferably this up there but I was too lazy and this got damaged and boring shit but my goal is to keep this in here I'm not sure if I can find drivers for this stuff but maybe I can find cards that do have drivers for the operating system since it's a special version I want to try this I've got a switch up there that has a Wi-Fi or not Wi-Fi wire fiber capabilities I want to try for a video card I'm not expecting anything. They have a GPU accelerator that fits in PCIX on eBay for like 60 bucks. I'll try that for giggles. And then maybe, maybe a uh, SATA card. Oop, sorry for the camera wobble again. I accidentally hit it. Just for giggles, see if I can get anything out of it. But yeah, this is basically that server. I'll give you a word of advice. Um, be ready to spend lots of little money like you would like you know McDonald's weekly like I needed processors I found a pair for this pair was 30 40 bucks the other pair was roughly 40 bucks 50 bucks the processor I'm looking at that has the right pinout and is specifically excuse me specifically labeled for this system is another 40 bucks don't make the same mistake I do look at the power connectors um, this is also designed for active heat sinks like this one but the power the pinout here is I'm sorry not the pinout the connector for the fans compared to what you have on here I believe it's right there it's for both of them are different now I could you know make a janky solution but I'm not that kind of guy you have a top over this that would allow for the active heat sinks but you can also take that off and I don't think you're supposed to, but I was going to do it. You can have active or passive cooled. So, you know, you don't have restrictions of the cylinder towers from these heat sinks that billow upwards. Because it was designed for that. But these fans should have, these fans probably would move enough air if you kept the top piece of the shroud on to cool these passive ones. I'll test that out for you guys. Yeah, so I'm going to basically fill up with memory, get a processor in there, go through installation hell, and basically just tinker with it. I might make an update video once I'm all done with it, but this one's on the back burner till summer when I am out of school and working full time. You know, typical college story. Yeah. Well, if you're ever interested in one of these, and if I get this to YouTube, and you can excuse my nasally voice and breathing and stupidity while trying to operate a camera and mess in the work basement have a good one guys if I can figure out how to stop the stupid camera